Country Basket Weaving. I'm your host, Sandy Atkinson. The basket we're working on today is our cowbell basket. The cut and material pattern for this basket is as follows. From half inch flat, you're going to need to cut four pieces that are 20 inches long. From 5 eighths inch flat, you're going to cut 16 pieces, 38 inches long. You'll need number two round and quarter inch flat oval for your weavers. You'll need 5 eighths inch flat oval for our rim, four millimeter cane, number eight round, cut two pieces that are approximately 20 inches long, and you'll need a bell. To get started, we're going to take our four pieces. I already have mine cut, and I have my centers marked. On these four pieces, I want you to mark the centers on the right side. And you're going to need a cup or a little bowl, something like that. Let me get out some number two round. And again, I'm going to have two different end lengths with a center crimp. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to lay my pieces on the top of my cup. Kind of like you're laying out a bicycle spoke. I'm going to start with a piece that runs under and loop over my crimped edge and I'm going to twine. I'm going to start with the one on the left and go around the next empty spoke. And we're going to twine around. Try to keep this circle nice and round. That first circle is important that we keep it nice and round because it's going to determine the whole shape of our base here. The reason for the cup is because we're trying to create a bulge in the middle of the basket. This is what helped protect the apples. This, by the way, a little history on this basket, was used out in apple orchards. And it has a center that's bulged out, and that simply is to protect uh, the apples from crushing each other. There is a bell, a cow bell put in the middle. You could also use a jingle bell or any type of bell. And that was simply put in the middle so that they could ring their basket, shake their basket, the bell would ring, and they would come and empty it for them. Now as you're working, push this down. We want it to start going down the sides here of our cup. You could use a bowl too. And I'm just twining around. I'm going to add a new piece. I think we've done twining enough where I can move right along and don't have to show you exactly every step on this now. Remember, I'm going to pick up this one, simply insert it, and keep right on going. I'm going to keep weaving this and keep arching it down around the sides of my cup until I have it large enough to cover my bell so my bell will shake in there gently. Let's keep working it around. I'm at a spot where I need to add a new piece now. Arch it down. Get out another piece. Add my new piece and keep right on going. It's starting to arch now. Pushing it down, keep pushing it down, make it arch right over that cup. Untangle your reed, you know it's going to tangle. Let me check it now. I think I need to arch it just a little bit more to get it over that bell. You can buy cowbells at craft stores. I've chosen for this one to use just a little bell. Here we are. This is just a miniature cowbell. It'll work also. And again, I've chosen to use in some other baskets I've made up of this style. I've just used some jingle bells, and they work fine too. I had some small jingle bells. I used about five or six of them when you use small ones together. Okay, I'm going to weave back to where I started, and I can tell because that's the one that is looped over. Straighten out my reed here. Okay, back where I started. Now, 
I think I have a large enough arch on there. That'll cover that bell. Now I'm going to take out eight of my other pieces. And these I have marked on the wrong side. These are going to slide underneath here. I'm not going to put my bell in yet. And I'm going to twine them in. Let me slide it over on this side. Line up my center. I'm going to twine in these pieces underneath my existing short pieces that I have here. You sometimes when you get going here, you just have to kind of guess out that center. Move this one out of the way. Give this a turn. When I turn it, they're going to undo themselves. So go back and adjust them. Let's add another one under here. Keep in mind that my wrong side on these long pieces is facing up. Also be careful when you have your hand here, you're not squishing down the top of your bell section. Twine in this piece. Now I have four pieces added, so what I'm going to do is pick up their tails when I come around this way. You may want to spin it so you don't have to weave upside down here. By now you should be pretty well accomplished on doing your twining. Make sure they line up. And we're going to do three rows. This is the beginning of my second row. Pull them tight. This is an awfully big basket again. It's hard for me to spin it without knocking everything off my table. I have two ends here and they've turned out to be the same length. So what I'm going to do so I don't stop and start at the same spot is simply cut one off and add a new piece a little early on that one. And keep right on going. Now I need to, I've got one more row to here, then we're going to add some more spokes. <coughs> oh, I pulled that one out. When that happens, simply back, weave, and replace it in here. Okay, now I've messed up my twining. Let me back up a little bit here. Bring this one out and start again. What I did was pull that one out. My twining's a little bit loose here, so come back here and you need to adjust it a little bit. Almost got my third row in here, and then we're going to add our bell. Okay, to add your bell now, because we're going to add some more spokes, but before we do that, come in here and pick this up and slip your little bell in there now. If you had a large bell like this, you'd have to add it before you added these spokes here. Now we're going to come in here Tighten these up, make sure they're lined up. And in between here, we're going to add some more spokes. You're going to twine in your new piece, twine in the existing one, I give it a turn here. And then I'm going to twine in another piece. Twine in my new piece and my existing one. Watch your twining. Mine looks a little loose. For time's sake, I won't go back and tighten it, but don't let yours get quite that loose. And twine in your next one. And again, your wrong sides on this part are facing up. Now I have these four added. I'm going to twine their tails in over on this side. So I'm going to catch each one of their tails at this point. Now 
Then I want you to continue working on this base at this point until it measures about nine inches across. Catch all these little tails in. Now I'm back to where I started. I've caught in all my tails. I've added my four additional here. So at this point, work this base out until it's nine inches. Be careful not to smash down your bulge here too. And we're gonna switch to another basket that I already have out at nine inches. Make sure it lays flat. Then I'm going to add eight more spokes. This basket has three bottoms on it and the reason being, of course you need to hold the bell in there and you also, it has the strength with three bottoms because apples are heavy. And this way it has a lot of strength. Mark up, you line up your piece in the middle here. We're going to twine our new piece and twine the existing piece. Then we're going to add another spoke. Slide it under the ones that are already there. Twine this one and the existing. And we're going to keep working this until we've used up all of our eight pieces. It really is easier, rather than spinning it, seeing I'm knocking everything off the table, to uh, weave upside down here. And again, be careful you don't squash your center down. And I'm going to weave the next one. When I get finished, I'll show you one of the bases on the bottom. It's really quite pretty. And I'm going to line that one up, twining this one and my existing one. Make sure you line them up correctly on the opposite side. And again, it looks like I'm coming out with two different, or two of the same end lengths. This is my last bulk. So what I'm going to do is come in here and cut this one off so I don't run out at the same time and add a new spoke. You're going to need several lengths of the number two put into soak. I'm going to twine the, now I'm catching my tails. I'm going to be twining all these spokes over here and catching my tails. Make sure they line up opposite of each other. I hope you can see what I'm doing because I am twining upside down here. Okay, I need to add another one. Open it up, insert it. Here's the tail. Pack my twining down. Pack your twining down in here tight. You don't want any gaps between your rows. And keep working all the way around. This first row is going to be the hardest, adding all these spokes. Once you get them twined in once, they're going to hold themselves next to the basket right where you want them. And I almost have one row in. We need to put in three rows, so I'm just going to keep on twining here. Packing each row down. And it's going to get tight in there, so just keep working it. I want you at this point to go ahead and do three rows. And I'm going to speed this up so we can get started on our spiraling. I've chosen quarter inch flat oval to use up the sides. And we're going to be spiraling it up because I have an even number of spokes. And I like the spiral pattern also. 
going to get in another row here quickly, so then we'll switch. Make sure you pack them in tight. Make sure you're picking up that left one. And we're going to work our way around. I'm almost finished with my second row. But I want you, for time's sake, I'm going to stop at my second row. I want you to do three rows because that's going to hold it in there good and securely. Just a few more. Pack the rows in. You won't need to work nearly as fast as I do. Okay, now I'm back. I will begin my second row, but for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and clip these off. Pretend like I have three rows in. Just leave these pieces on the inside. We'll go back later and do some trimming on them. Now what we need to do is upset our basket, and that's simply bringing these up all the way around, giving them a bend. The ones that have the double spokes laying across, put a good bend in there because you've got two layers there to bend up. Now we're going to need our flat oval and we're going to put a point, or I mean a taper, pardon me, a taper, put about a two inch taper on it, which is just simply cutting it back like that. Starting anywhere, the flat side is going to face the basket. I'm going to always start on top. That's always the rule, always on top. If you need to, put a clip in there. And we're going to weave this just a basic weave over and under. Start making your sides form up. So bend them and keep bending them up. Working your way all the way around. Once we get the first three rows in, it'll set nicely for us. Because I have an even number of spokes, when I get back to where I started, I will be on the exact same pattern that I started. And if I kept weaving like that, it wouldn't hold itself together. So here's where I started. So in order to create this spiral and get me on the opposite weave again, I'm going to skip over two. Here's where I started. I'm going to start skip over this one and the one next to it and go behind the third one over. That puts me on my opposite weave. Work them down, pack them in, and this is what's going to keep it together. As you work your second row, keep pushing that first row down because it does try to push up there on you. Over and under. This is a nice basket to stain. I can see the apple pickers out in the orchard jingling their bells to be unloaded with their apple basket here. I suppose that this is a small version of the basket. I bet they were much larger than this originally. Because this really wouldn't hold that many apples. Okay, I'm back to where I started my spiral again. This was the first two I went over. Now I'm going to go over this one and this one and go around here. Continue this spiral each time moving over one. So you have a spiral going up the side of the basket. You want to continue weaving it up until you're about three inches from the top. At that point, we're going to do our tuck and trims. Let me quickly show you the base of this basket. Here's my three rows in here. See how this spirals out, isn't it pretty? On this one, I stopped my spirals and I added my number two round just for a variation of it. If the weaver goes behind, it's going to get tucked. If the weaver goes in front of, remember, it's going to get cut off. So I have two here I need to cut off. Go inside the basket. And I know this part's hard for you to see. We're going to skip over the first row of our weaving. And we're going to tuck in our second and thirds. But obviously, this one's too long. So we're going to come in here and just trim it back. Open it up and stick this down in there. It's really not that difficult. It's just hard doing it upside down sometimes. 
We're going to stick it in there, work it down in. This one split on me. If it's split, you can put them in two separates. Pull it out. Push it down in there. Well, that just one doesn't want to go. Let's come in here and trim this one back. See if we have better luck with this one. Open it up. Still a little bit long. And push it down in there. Now that we've finished our tucking, we're going to start putting our rim on. I have my 5 8 flat oval. Take a sharp knife. We're going to whittle this down for about two inches. And what we're doing is taking off the round part, top part of this flat oval reed so that it will lay next to itself when we get around the basket. Go ahead and pin this on. You'll need lots of clothespins. Pin it on the outside of the basket, working your way around. Come to where you've overlapped here on your whittling. Where you started your whittling, that's where you're going to cut this one off. Sometimes I like to come in here and trim this down a little bit on the outside, too. With the flat side facing the inside and on the opposite side now, whoops, first we need to whittle this down. Almost forgot. Take off your two inches here. On the opposite side, we're going to lay this one inside the basket. The flat side of the reed is facing the inside of the basket. Work your way around overlap and cut it off where you started your whittling. Now I took a piece of number three seagrass and I'm going to lay it in the top here. I like this effect. It covers up the top of the spokes and looks really nice. Taking our caning, put a point on it. Here are my overlaps. I want to stay away from my overlaps so I'm going to come across here. I'm going to come up. Remember we have a rim, basket, rim. We're coming from the bottom up, about five inches. We're circling and going down to the outside. What I've done is circled around the basket. Come up here, taking your screwdriver, open up between your, your spokes, between your weavers, and you're going to insert it and go back to the inside. I'm going to do that very same thing again coming up between my basket rims and I'm going to circle and go to the outside. I'm going to leave that little tail there. We'll trim it later when we come back around. I'm going to lay in my seagrass, bring this around, go between my weavers and work my lashing all the way around. You're going to end it the very same way that you started it, going up around it twice and then cutting off your little tail. This is that big jingle bell I used. I want to show you how to get these handles in real quickly. What I've done here is I've made my arch on my handle and I've carved down either side. So we want to do that quickly. About five or six inches you're going to carve this down, making it flat on both sides. This will help it slide right down into the basket easier. Then using your flathead screwdriver, open up pieces in here between your rims, right under your rim and between your weavers and bring this end up here and clamp it. Same thing on this side. I have these marked to save time so that they were directly opposite of the first handle I put in. And bring this piece up here. Make sure your handles are at the same height. Kind of look at your basket, make sure they're the same height. And again, clamp this piece here. Taking a piece of caning, I like to, we're going to lay the right side of the caning faces the basket so my wrong side is facing out. Lay it up there and do what I call a miter. Brings up the right side now and we're going to do a wrap. I'm going to move it up just a little higher. It doesn't want to sit there. Come around here. Catch that tail when you come around. Pulling it in tight and we're going to catch the tail and catch the other side of the handle all at the same time. Give this a little tug and tighten it up and do a handle wrap. 
And all I'm doing is I'm butting these up to each other. I am not overlapping. And we'll quickly wrap this up here. You're going to have to go past your overlap spot. Come in here and catch this here. Pull it tight and continue wrapping around. And then to end it, you need to come back here. I have a long length here. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to come back here, unwrap it, and insert it down at least four to hold it in there tight. Get the end of it to come out. Pull it down, then take your thumb and go back here and tighten these all back down. Spend some time, tighten them, get them to butt up to each other so there's no gaps in between, and give this a pull. Then come in here with your scissors and cut that off short, and then you won't see that part. But that's how you do a handle wrap. The next time we get together, we'll be working on our Joseph sewing basket. This has a potpourri lid. A lot of intricate detail in this basket. I think you'll enjoy this one too. We'll look for you again next week.